Good evening. Hey guys, Actual Dracula here, and I just got back from Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm still taking it all in. I had such an amazing weekend. The whole experience was incredible. This was my second time attending Heroes Con. Last year was my first time, and when I got back from that, I was like, man, this has got to be one of the best cons ever. And after this weekend, I mean, that seals the deal. That's it. I haven't been to that many different conventions, but... You know, I don't I don't even need to this is this is clearly the best one guys if you have not been to Heroes Con uh, I could not recommend it more highly Such an incredible experience got to meet uh, So many amazing people creators friends members of the community um, Yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about Heroes Con and uh, the experience I had this weekend so what I'm going to do here is show off uh, my haul, some of the books I picked up. I'm actually going to break up this video into two parts. The first part will be all of my uh, indie and underground comic pickups. And then the second part will be my big two Marvel and DC pickups. But before I get to that, I'm going to do the overhead camera. Before I do that, I'm going to uh, show off the two non-comic items uh, I picked up. First of which is this sweet cult of dracula shirt from my guy rich davis writer of cult of dracula friend of the channel i've had him on here a couple times and uh i love this comic and so great shirt this is the cover for issue one and what's great is the color of the shirt actually matches the color of the cover it's that same off-white so fantastic shirt so thank you for that, Rich. And then this shirt I'm wearing right now, the Remember Read More Comics. This is the uh, Heroes Con exclusive Eddie P. Memorial t-shirt. Uh, as Ed Piscor's family did have a table set up there uh, right next to Jim Rugg. So um, I actually did get a chance to meet Ed and Jim last year. I'm so grateful I was able to do that. Uh, it was amazing to see Jim again and uh, got to chat with him uh, for a bit. And then meeting Ed's family, uh, his uh, sisters, Justine and Bree, and then his brothers-in-law, uh, Josh and Sean. Uh, they, you know, they were there all weekend. Um, and they've just been doing a phenomenal job uh, to keep Ed's uh, legacy going. And, uh, you know, they had a bunch of books and prints of his there. And, uh, yeah, so that they... they it was great to meet them, uh, all really incredible people. There was then on Sunday uh, the Eddie P. Memorial panel uh, that I attended with uh, Ed's family, uh, as well as a couple other guests. Jim was there, um, uh, Michelle Fife and uh, Jim Mafood. And Chris, I want to say it's Chris Pitzer was there as well. Um, yeah, so... Overall, incredible experience, and I'm just gonna, I got a bunch of books to show you guys, so I'm just gonna get right into it. All right, so before I even get to the books I picked up at the con, I got a couple things I got to show off uh, from two gentlemen uh, who sent me stuff uh, shortly before the con, but uh, I never got a chance to make the, uh, the video for that. Uh, so I'll just do that now. Now you'll see a bunch of stickers here, and uh, there's a bit of a clue there as to who it's from. West Coast Avengers. That's right. I got a package from West Coast Avengers as uh, back in May, uh, April, May, I want to say. It was April, maybe. Uh, West Coast Avengers, who, guys, by the way, if you're not familiar with, he's got a great YouTube channel. Awesome dude. And uh, back in April, he put on this... Uh, two-day event called uh, DayVengerCon. There's the sticker for that right there. It was basically two days. He streamed all day, both days. Uh, had, you know, live sales, auctions, um, uh, and he had interviews uh, with, you know, creators like uh, Matt Wagner, Eric Larson, and uh, then he did, um, on the last day, he did a big uh, raffle auction and yeah, it, it was great. It was fantastic. I thought it went uh, went really well. And I took part in actually uh, one of the shows was an art show. Uh, it was me alongside uh, some other amazing artists. There was uh, Rob McCallum. There was uh, Mike and Gabby, a.k.a. Vlad and Ivory Bunny. And there was Jeremy Heiler as well. I uh, remember that name because you're going to see something from him in a minute. 
And I think that was it. I hope I'm not missing anyone. Anyhow, um, he sent me this uh, thank you package, I guess, for taking part. And uh, this is amazing because, you know, these stickers, I w really wanted a bunch of these stickers. The Spider-Man Spawn one is fantastic. See Todd by Todd. I'm not sure who he's talking about there. Uh, I'll have to ask him what that means. Uh, maybe Todd McFarlane? I don't know. I'm not sure if he's a fan at all. Anyhow, and of course, this great uh, Bill Sienkiewicz Sankiewicz. Bill Sienkiewicz Sankiewicz. Oh, there goes my alarm. Just ignore that. Yeah, and, uh, but, um, my favorite, of course. You know, Dave's a man after my own heart. He knows I'm all about that Jar Jar Binks, baby. So there's the West Coast Avengers Jar Jar sticker. And he sent in the sweet pin that's going to go on my vest. Uh, along with the stickers, which I shall now move aside, uh, he sent me another treasure here. Absolutely love. He knows I'm a big fan of this book right here. So this is incredible. This, guys, this is, uh, you may be familiar with this book. This is a Turok Dinosaur Hunter issue one. Not just that, though. This is the Hot, hot book. This is the DevengerCon Woe Edition, signed by the one and only Comic Tim, man. You see that? One of one. You got Comic Tim's signature. If you're not familiar with Comic Tim, uh, you can see some of his videos up on uh, on Dave's channel. He's just sort of like a comics journalist sort of a guy. Uh, you know, he's interviewed like Stan Lee, uh, Todd McFarlane, you know, and uh, yeah, really really great so this is phenomenal because i you know I've, i haven't got a chance to meet comic tim yet but just to have his signature i mean it's so rare just to get uh, the guy does not like to to sign uh, anything really so this is i don't know how dave talked him into it but that's fantastic and then right here he's got D uh, dracula ain't got shit on turok i uh, can't really argue with that uh, so thank you so much for that, Dave. Oh, and so, uh, West Coast, uh, Dave Avengers, I did, uh, Dave did attend Heroes Con as well. So I finally got to meet him in person, which was fantastic. And he gave me this, which is, um, The Devil's Cut. This was Distillery's first publication. It's like an anthology. It's got, uh, you know, work from Mercury and Dolfo, Brian Azzarello, um, Ram V, Scott Snyder, James Tynan, Christian Ward, of course, who I love. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much, Dave. I haven't read this yet, but I'm really looking forward to that. So there we go. That's uh, first up and out of the way. Great to meet Dave in person. Hopefully you get to see him again soon. Uh, and next up, this was one other thing I received uh, about a week or two before the con. And I did mention this man earlier. Jeremy Heiler, who is a fantastic artist and cartoonist, and he had uh, he had a deal going uh, on his website. If uh, you ordered his two comics here, you'd get this print as well. So this is this awesome uh, Mandalorian print. Uh, there's uh, Mando with Grogu. That is amazing. I love Jeremy's style uh, so much. So this is great. And then these are his comics. Uh, this is always my father. And that, uh, that is indeed Splinter from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this is his comic uh, that is uh, dedicated to his father. And so it's a, uh, this is really fantastic. It is a moving story. And it's, um, yeah, I, I can't uh, recommend you guys checking out Jeremy Heiler enough. Uh, he's doing phenomenal work. And there's uh, Splinter on the back. And then you've got his other, his bat, First Batman comic, um, uh, first of, uh, well, he, d he did just put out another one recently called Batman Rain. Uh, you can check that out on his website, which I believe is just jeremyhyler.com. I'll put all the links below. But this is uh, the one he did, uh, I guess it was earlier this year uh, or last year, Batman Snow. And again like this is just phenomenal i'm not going to go through the whole thing but i did just want to show you uh you know what jeremy's doing here is really phenomenal i absolutely love that page and uh jeremy really inspires me this dude works really fast as well i mean as soon as he finished this he got 
got to work on Batman Rain and got that done in what seemed like no time. So, uh, huge shout out to Jeremy, who also was at Heroes Con, and I got to meet him in person, and that was fantastic. Uh, you know, when you go to these, uh, when you go to a, a big con convention like Heroes Con, uh, it's a little overwhelming. There's so many different people, so, uh, you know, I didn't get to chat with Jeremy t for too long, but, um, you know, uh, hopefully uh, there will be another chance uh, in the near future to uh, to hang out with him uh, further. And then uh, here, uh, uh, this is this is I'm getting now to my first official. This might have been my first official pickup uh, from the con, and this comes from Vero Vero Stewart. Vero didn't want anything for this. She just gave it to me. So thank you very much, Vero. And uh, yeah, go to VeroStuart.com, Kinetic Radio on Instagram. Great artist and cartoonist, and along with Jeremy, uh, they are helping to make what has become one of my, uh, really, one of my favorite things uh, of late, and that is the Power to the Panel podcast with uh, Mossy, with Brian Christopher Moss. He does the talking. These guys help produce the podcast. Uh, they've been on it as well, right? Talking, using their mouths too. Um, but guys, uh, I, I do just want to give a huge shout out to uh, to Brian Moss. He uh, unfortunately was not at the con, uh, um, I, so I did not get to meet him. But just huge shout out to to Mossy for everything that he's been doing with the KFAM Sunday page and and with the Power to the Panel podcast. Um, really, it's just, uh, I know I speak uh, on behalf of like everyone that's part of the KFAM, just, you know, thank you for everything you've been doing. Uh, it's truly appreciated and really inspirational. The podcast has been excellent. And um, yeah, I, I could do a much longer video just talking about that, but I'm doing the haul video right now. Just wanted to, just wanted to give Brian a shout out because we got Jeremy and Vero here, and um, I really, uh, um, you know, have got to become more familiar with them and their work uh, because of what Brian's been doing. So, shout out to Brian. Anyhow, there's Jeremy's book. There's this is Vero's uh, Bardasaurus Rex uh, comic. This is the first six pages of her Bardasaurus Rex comic. Uh, I read this. I absolutely love it. Um, it's so much fun, and I really like uh, I, I really like Vera style as well. And you can find her at uh, Kinetic Radio on Instagram. Again, guys, I'll have all these links below. All right. So next up will be the Comics Curing Cancer art book. C three Comics Curing Cancer had a booth at uh, Heroes Con. Uh, Mark Legion of Comics, DJ Links, and Rob Fat Sex were there. And, and they set up a really nice booth. Uh, Austin LeMay was there pretty much all weekend as well. He did the cover cover art for this. Awesome Austin LeMay cover. I guess if you don't know about C3, uh, I implore you to, to check out Comics Curing Cancer. Uh, on uh, Follow them on Instagram. I'll have the links to all this, the C3 stuff below. Uh, basically everything they do, uh, such as the yearly uh, uh, live events and auctions to the sales of this book, all proceeds uh, go to the American Cancer Society to help fund cancer research. Uh, and it's been a phenomenal success uh, so far. And so this is the very first C3 art book. Uh, we've got some great artists, community artists in here. And uh, I was honored to uh, be among them. And I won't go through the whole thing. Uh, there are copies. This was this was uh, only available at first to people at Heroes Con, but I believe there are still some copies available online now. Uh, I'll put the link to that. Also, if you're in Canada, guys, I have a few extra copies. So if you are interested, I especially picked up a few others for some of my Canadian people. Uh, that way, you know, to save on shipping and whatnot. So uh, I won't show the whole thing. I will show uh, there's a Comic Journeys piece right next to my swamp thing piece so I think that turned out pretty good uh, yeah the uh, print quality is great everything looks exactly as I made it so and uh, the original 
uh, drawing of this, which I don't have on hand, uh, but the original um, ink drawing 11 by 17 will be up for auction uh, come this October when C3 does their big uh, uh, three-day event. So, yeah, that's it. That's I was really happy to actually see this uh, in hand, see all the other artwork in it. Uh, really great. Uh, huge shout out to Rob and Mark and DJ for you know all the hard work they put into uh, into C3 uh, in general with the booth and uh, and for putting this together as well. It's really great. Okay, so that's that. Then this was um, uh, the only piece of like original art I got. But man, I am really happy with this. This was not a commission. This was a piece that had already been done and he was just selling and I saw it and I was like that I have to get that that's amazing uh, and this is uh, an 8 billion genies blank with a death lock genie this is by Kevin Delgado uh, phenomenal artist uh, he's I believe he's based in Buffalo and yeah I, I just I had to get this uh, it was I just love it uh, I I've always thought Deathlock is one of the coolest looking characters ever. So to make him uh, the little genie dude here is just perfect. And uh, Charles Sewell and Ryan Brand were both there at the con. So I got them both to sign it as well. So there's that. Thank you, Kevin. Let's get right into some straight up comic books here, guys. This is the Indian Underground pickups I got. First up, we've got American Flag, a book I did not own. I've always wanted to own it. Uh, did pick up a, you know, pretty nice copy here. It's got some defects, but whatever. Uh, this is Howard Chaykin's American Flag. Uh, I, uh, screwed up though. Uh, Howard Chaykin was at the con, but I did not get him to sign it. It's, uh, too bad, you know, maybe next time. Maybe he'll be back or at another con. Uh, that's okay. It's still a cool pickup. Okay, so let's travel from the good old USA and the Stars and Stripes to Swastikas and the Third Reich. <laughs> All right, this is anti-Hitler comics, and uh, yeah, it does, It guess it does what it says on the box. This contains some uh, reprints of some anti-Hitler comics, and yeah, I know this might sound a bit controversial, uh, I don't care, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of this dude, you know, uh, I would, I'm just going to come right out and say I'm, I would consider myself anti-Hitler. You know, I think he was a bad dude. You know, if that gets me canceled, so be it. But I just, you know, it's what I believe. And uh, here it looks like we've got Hitler in, uh, appears to be in hell, where he belongs, in my opinion. And uh, if you can't deal with that, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. So very cool, anti, anti-Hitler comics, anti-Hitler, however you want to say it. Uh, it's uh, not a pro-Hitler comic. So you can see the swastikas have been crossed out there. So, yeah, very cool. Always down for some uh, anti-Hitler, anti-Nazi stuff. And speaking of dictators, check this out. This was a cool find. This is Daffy Kadaffy, Malice in Wonderland. Now, uh, I actually, I feel like I'd seen this before. I don't know, maybe it was just a dream. But I've definitely never seen it uh, in the wild or at a con or anything, so I had to grab this. And this, uh, I, I opened it up, and I could not find any information as to who made this book. And that's because it was created anonymously. The only information is that it's published by Comics Unlimited Limited. And there's one little uh, mark on the inside that says, um, you know, copyright Comics USA. And, uh, yeah, so it was created by someone calling themselves Comics USA. Uh, I don't know if their identity has ever been found. I did a little bit of research, or tried to, and I couldn't find anything. I don't know if, if anyone knows who made this. <laughs> if you plug this book into, um, I plugged it into my CLZ, and it is attributed to uh, Tony Tallarico. Uh, who's an old school Charlton and Dell Comics guy? So I don't think it was by him. I think someone's just having a having a laugh there. But still, very cool. Uh, find Daffy Kadaffy. Next up, we've got uh, Copra by M Michel Fife. Um, 
Now, uh, FIFA's uh, a creator, I've kind of come to, uh, I, I really only discovered maybe over the past couple years, but uh, really, I really love his work, um, and I was really happy to pick this up. This is uh, round one of his book, Copra, and the artwork is beautiful, it's amazing, but I'm possibly even more excited to get this, which is uh, Michel Fife's Creating Copper, the definitive DIY gui guide to making and self-publishing comics. And uh, yeah, this this was something I was really looking forward to picking up. Uh, I know a lot of other, uh, you know, fellow cartoonists uh, have, have got this and said it's, it's fantastic, you know, a must read. So really looking forward to digging into that. And then here's the little copper catalog. That's a fantastic drawing there. Uh, with the catalog of all Michel's uh, books there. He's, he's been plugging away at copper for a long time. So he's got uh, a lot of books. And uh, as well as Zegas. Some other stuff there. Yeah, so great. So it was great to meet, meet uh, Michel and pick up these books. And then, of course, um, one of the highlights of this con, absolutely... Um, was getting to meet Jim Rugg uh, again. Uh, I met him for the first time last year, but I didn't get to talk to him very much. Uh, whereas I was kind of, you know, I, I I was I was always walking by his booth, and uh, and uh, you know he was kind enough to chat with me, you know, pretty much every time I came by there. Um, and yeah, so I picked up. This is his '86 zine. And this is, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open up everything, uh, guys. I already bagged and boarded everything, and we'll be here all day if I do that. But there is, uh, I just wanted to show you this because it's not, it's not a comic exactly. It's a, it's a zine. So it's a bunch of uh, found items, you know, uh, scans of, you know, other people's stuff. I mean, there was, uh, what was that, Grendel? Yeah, there you go. Charles you know, Charles Burns and Matt Wagner stuff right there. Uh, yeah, so really cool. Um, looking forward to getting into that a bit deeper. And he did have, <coughs> excuse me, he has a new comic out just in time for Heroes Con. This is Conspiracy Comics, and this is a comic book. Uh, I haven't uh, I haven't read this yet. Um, I do believe there's like a wrestling story in here. You know, Jim, Jimmy loves his wrestling, and then, uh, is, I, I don't know, I want to say there's like three stories in here, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but yeah, really looking forward to this, I absolutely love this cover, so yeah, it was great to, uh, see Jimmy again, and talk with him, just the nicest dude, really, and, uh, yeah, so, that's Conspiracy Comics, and of course, uh, Jimmy was uh, tabled right next to uh, Ed Piscor's uh, family, uh, his siblings and uh, brothers-in-law, and they did have a bunch of uh, Ed stuff there. You know, copies of Hip Hop Family Tree uh, Treasury Edition, um, or sorry, the new you know the new hardcover. Uh, they had some prints, and then they had a whole bunch of these Red Room variants. Uh, so, uh, you know, I got a bunch already myself, but there was a couple here I did not have. I was really, ha really happy to pick up. And uh, this is the um, Jim Rugg uh, Charles Burns Black Hole homage. That's, uh, which I love. If you guys, if you haven't read Black Hole, I, uh, that's a must read. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. Charles Burns is a maniac. Is his artwork's just so good, and uh, oh, I I forgot to get this signed by Jim. Uh, that's okay. I'll uh, next time. And then we got another Red Room here. This is um, oh, and I think this is Red Room Crypto Killers issue two, and then this is Red Room Crypto Killers issue three, and this is the Jim of Food variant. Another dude who uh, I'm just was really happy uh, I got to meet um, he's another g 
guy that really inspires me. I love his work. And uh, so my food signed this one. It's just a phenomenal cover. Absolutely. And yeah. Um, there you go. The two the two gyms. Really just killing it. And uh, both super nice guys. Uh, absolutely. It was an honor to uh, to chat with them this, this past weekend. All right. So speaking of uh, Ed and Jim and cartoonist Kayfabe, uh, this is something... I may have completely overlooked had it not been for the kayfabe effect, had it not been for Ed and Jim doing a video on this. And of course, uh, I immediately said, you know, when I found this, this is coming home with me because this is a very cool comic by Stephen Bissett. This is Tyrant issue two. And this is a straight up dinosaur comic. It's about a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, and also, it's about the brutality of uh, nature and survival, and it's beautifully drawn, so I was really happy to find this. Uh, it's issue two, so I'll definitely be hunting down uh, the remaining three issues of Tyrant. Very cool. Next up, Mobius. Mobius Comics issue two from Caliber Comics. You know what it is. Unless you don't, you know, it's... It's possible you're watching this and you're not familiar with Mobius at all. There's a first first time for everyone. But uh, if you don't know who Mobius is, go look up Mobius right now. Pause the video and, uh, yeah, check it out. But, yeah, Mobius, of course, just one of the all-time greats. He's uh, on my on my Mount Rushmore of comic book artists. Um, that's, all, that's all I really need to say about that. Uh, this was a book I knew... In advance, I would definitely be picking up because uh, I knew he was going to be here, there. Uh, Tom Scioli, Witch Man. And uh, I haven't read this yet, but I flipped through it. And guys, the colors on this are just incredible. This is one I will, I will open up right now just because I want to show you, um, first of all, you know, the pa I love the, the paper he's used here, but the colors in this are just gorgeous, uh, really colorful. Um, yeah, it looks amazing. Looks better in person than on the camera as well. So, yeah, really happy to pick up Witch Man. This looks very cool. There we go. All right. Next up is Underwater Issue 1 by Chester Brown. Uh, now, this is um, a series I have not read. Chester Brown, Canadian cartoonist, uh, Toronto-based. Um, he is one of the first, you know, indie, underground cartoonists I ever discovered. I've been uh, reading his work for, you know, nearly 30 years, and uh, of course he's most well known for his Yummy, Yummy Fur series, and this was, I believe, I want to say 11 issues of this underwater. This was a series he never actually completed. He, uh, he left it, I guess he had planned for more than 11 issues, but just never got around to doing it, moved on to other things, and so yeah, there's issue one. Here is Mr. A by Steve Ditko. So, obviously, not a Marvel book. This is a, one of uh, Steve Ditko's, um, you know, many uh, independent projects. And, yeah, I know, you know, I've this is a book I've seen before. I honestly, I honestly don't really know much about Mr. A. Because um, <clears throat> I've never, uh, yeah, I've never read it. And there's more than one issue of this. So this is issue. This is issue two, I believe. There's some mix-up with it, like being labeled issue four, but it's actually or labeled issue two, but it's actually issue four, or whatever. I don't remember. I don't remember which is which. But um, yeah, there's Mr. A. Next up, I don't know what this book is. It's Tommy. Uh, this is Tommy issue one, uh, by someone named John Uloa uh, and Al. Bondiga and Juan Navarro. 
This is from Creature Entertainment. And yeah, I don't know what this is. I picked this up for the cover. Uh, it's got that Misfit skull, that Fiend Club skull with some bunny ears. And apparently this is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So, you know, just a really awesome cover. Speaking of awesome covers, from Kitchen Sink Press High Adventure number one. I mean, it's a dude, uh, you know, wrangling a pterodactyl on a beautiful painted cover. That's all I need to know. I don't, I don't know what's on the inside of this. I'll find out eventually, but, you know, how is I not going to pick that up? The guy's got a pterodactyl by the neck. Anything Goes Issue 2. This was an anthology series published by Fantagraphics, created to help pay the legal costs of Gary Groth and the Comics Journal uh, during a defamation lawsuit, which I you know, don't really know much about. That would uh, require further research. But check out the roster in this issue. Some he heavy hitters. Uh, you know, you've got Jaime Hernandez. You've got Alan Moore and Donald Simpson. Jack Kirby and Joe Sinnott. Uh, Jack Cronin and Dennis Fujitaki. Art Spiegelman and Sam Keith. And then that killer Frank Miller cover. So, yeah, that just looks awesome. This is a cool find, Eric Powell, 2003 convention sketchbook, Chicago convention sketchbook, with uh, some racy pictures inside, ring-a-ding-ding, -ding. Uh, that's excellent, and this one, uh, this is one I will open to, because you just got to see some gorgeous sketches in here, now, uh, Eric Powell, of course, creator of The Goon, that's one book that yeah, still on my reading list. Still haven't just not got around to reading the Goon. I've never read it. Obviously, I've been familiar with it for many years, and and uh, you know, Eric Powell's art, I I've just always been a, a big fan of. Just never got around to reading reading the Goon. I will eventually though. But yeah, so there's some sketches of uh, well, there's the Goon, just some you know creatures. This is all just pencil drawings, really. Uh, Really phenomenal stuff. And this is signed by Eric, and it's uh, 939 of a thousand, so only a thousand copies of this. That was a cool find. Now, this is an interesting find. Never seen this before. This is Solson's Comic Talent Star Search, issue one. As you can see on the cover here, it says, who will be the next fan to make it as a comics writer? Participate in Solson's comic talent star search, and it could be you. So apparently they published two issues of this, and yeah, I mean, I saw this. I was intrigued. I had to find out more, and it's actually pretty cool. First of all, Solson, uh, which I've, I've got, a f I think I've picked up a f couple more Solson books here. I have it other places. Solson was run by the son of Saul Brodsky of Marvel Comics fame, hence Saul Son, right? Pretty clever. And so this includes a plot synopsis followed by 14 pages of sequential art with no text. Now, when I was, I actually showed this book to uh, Jim Rugg and uh, West Coast Dave. I didn't open it up, but I think we were all in agreement that this might just be text inside quite the opposite what it is is comic it's comics with no text the idea being that the aspiring writers fill in the text right so you've just got comics with uh yeah you just if you're an aspiring writer you write your own story in the panels so actually kind of cool and then here's just a ripoff press uh, 19, summer 1989 dealer edition catalog. I love stuff like this. Just a rip-off catalog. So, you know, source for new and back issue adult and underground comics, graphic albums, and related merchandise. Uh, yeah. That's it. And this was something I've never seen before. Garco Systems presents the Illustrated Comic Art Workshop. And so this is like, uh, you know, an educational how-to 
you know, make comics book, uh, a la How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, but a much, uh, much more, uh, we'll say, well, it's much smaller. Um, but it is by Dick Giordano and Frank McLaughlin with John Romita. So, yeah, the, and this is, well, Volume 1 Basics, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, I flipped through it, it's not dissimilar to How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way or, you know, books like that. Uh, but this one, uh, with, uh, John Romita art instead of, uh, uh, what was that, Sal Buscema that did, uh, How to Draw, uh, the Marvel Way? Anyways, yeah, that was a cool find. This, uh, is the book I've known about for a long time, never actually seen it in the wild. Never had the opportunity to pick it up, so I did. This is Kill Image by Hart D. Fisher. And it's got a cool foil on the logo there. I like that. And, of course, there's Todd and Jim Lee and Rob. Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> there's uh, Hart Fisher there. Um, yeah, I just I had to get this because, yeah, this is, a, this is kind of a notorious book. And um, I've never actually uh, seen a copy of it. So, um, yeah, I had to grab that. Speaking of controversial, right? Tipper Gore. So this is Tipper Gore's Comics and Stories, um, issue two from Revolutionary Comics, who I believe you know uh, published a whole bunch of those like celebrity and musician, you know, bio bio comics. And uh, so this is yeah, it's horror horror stories and. You know, they use Tipper Gore. They There was actually a really great introduction on the inside. I won't read that right now. Maybe uh, I, I will probably at some point start doing some um, deeper deep dive videos into some of these books. Like I'll do a bunch of them at once. This will definitely be one of them, I think, because it looks pretty interesting. So, yeah, that's a really cool cover. So that's Tipper Gore's Comics and Stories. And then we're going to get into some more horror stuff here. Vault of Screaming Horror by uh, from Fantico. And uh, this book is by uh, Gurchain Singh, a.k.a. The Gurch. And you're going to see a lot of these books coming up have got a lot of the Gurch in them. And this book is just, uh, I believe, all Gurch stuff, horror stuff. Uh Really nice copy. I love this green cover. So going into this con, I didn't really have any particular goals, any particular book uh, I was, you know, hunting for, with one exception, and that is Gore Shriek. And Gore Shriek was a horror, you know, anthology style uh, series. So you've got Stories and art from different creators. Uh, I believe some from the uh, aforementioned Gurch. And Gore Shriek, uh, issue one, uh, which I already owned, contains the first published work uh, by Greg Capullo. And uh, I'll put that, uh, that up on the screen right now. That also happens to have, in my opinion, one of the greatest comic covers of all time. Uh, Capullo just did some interiors. I, I actually got that book signed by him uh, last year. Uh, so I owned that. I owned, I think, one other issue of Gore Shriek, but I, I came into this con saying, if I can find any more Gore Shriek books, I'll be happy. And, yeah, I found this one vether, vendor who had the mother load. He had a whole bunch of Gore Shriek. So I grabbed them all. There's uh, Gore Shriek Volume 1, Issue 2. Gore Shriek Volume 1. Issue 5, Gore Shriek, Volume 1, Issue 6, then we got the Gore Shriek Annual, Gore Shriek, Volume 2, Issue 1, that's an awesome cover by the Gurch, there we go, Gurch in action. And Gore Shriek, Volume 2, Number 2. Uh, 
And Gore Shriek two and a half. Volume two, two and a half, special limited edition, all Gurch issue. There he is again. This one, like the Screaming Vault of Horror, this is all Gurch. This is a, a, a much smaller issue though. This is like a little, this is a thin thin guy. There's not that many pages in it. Still pretty cool. And then finally we've got um, Gore Shriek Resurrectus. Awesome cover there. Oh, this one has been signed. I didn't even realize that. Signed by, I don't recognize the signature. Looks kind of like it says Derek. I don't know. Figure, I'll, I'll look into that, see who signed this. Anyway, so I was stoked to find all these Gore Shriek books because I, I don't, these are not books I ever come across, you know, in any of my shops. And uh, yeah, so that was... Uh, Really phenomenal. I was really happy to get those. Next up is Dan O'Neill's Comics and Stories, Issue 1. And, yeah, this is, a you know, a book... Uh, I, You know, I, I've heard about it. I honestly don't know that much. I mean, you see what's happening on the cover here. You got Porky Pig uh, blowing, I guess, Big Bad Wolf's uh, brains out the sun looking on and and inside it's uh, you know I think more more the same it's cartoon violence uh, at its finest and it says here January 1948 uh, but this was actually published you know sometime in the 70s it's not that old and yeah still cool find there was there was more but I just uh, you know I just picked up the first issue next up from last gasp We've got Skull, number four, and uh, Skull, number five. Um, just amazing cover. I don't remember which one. Yeah, this says special issue Lovecraft. Could be this one. It could be five. I don't. I don't remember which. But one of these um, has an adaptation of the excellent H.P. Lovecraft story, The Rats in the Walls. Uh, by Richard Corbin. Uh, so I love that story. So looking forward to reading uh, Corbin's visual telling of that. And that's a, I love that cover. This one's just, just crazy as well. So good. So that is Skull issues four and five. Then also from Last Gasp, Slow Death. Uh, this is Slow Death issue two. And Slow Death, issue six. And, uh, yeah, so this is, you know, uh, I think, you know, like Skull, similar to the Skull comics, this is a Last Gasp, you know, anthology. Um, got artwork from Rand Holmes. And, uh, you know, you've, in, in a lot of these books, you'll find, like, yeah, Rand Holmes, Richard Corbin, and... You know, so a lot of weird horror and sci-fi stuff. Very cool. Always phenomenal covers. Adults only, of course. There's uh, usually some weird, sexy stuff in these too. So yeah, those are those are nice finds. And very much in the same vein as Skull and Slow Death. We've got Death Rattle. This is from Kitchen Sink Press. This is Death Rattle issue two. Death Rattle issue four. Again, there's Rand Holmes, phenomenal Rand Holmes cover. And yeah, I mean, I think if you're a fan of heavy metal, stuff like this is probably right up your, your alley. Sexy sci-fi creature stuff. And uh, yeah, just such a good cover. I love this, uh, this too. Real nice, uh, clean copy. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to digging into all those. And then speaking of Richard Corbin, Fantagore, issue one. This is uh, by Richard Corbin from Last Gasp. So, yeah, this this you know stack here, this little section, this all really kind of goes together. And again, I found all this from I believe I found all this from the same vendor. This was most of these books I'm showing you right now were from essentially just two vendors who both. Um, specialized in all the Indian underground stuff. So these, these I gotta pull out of the bags. So this is Richard Corbin's Ralph from Ripoff Press. And 
there it is again, Ralph. Check out that cover, guys. The, the like, dog man, werewolf. Uh, whatever you want to call him, Ralph. Okay, so, I'm going to take this out and take that out. Now, this was published by Ripoff Press, and I got to say, <laughs> that's fitting. Uh, as Ripoff, uh, they got a little cheeky with this book. I don't know, maybe it was Corbin's idea, but... Uh, so, as there's no number on the on the covers here, I wasn't sure uh, if these were the same book or not. You know, there's no issue number on the cover, and that's because it's, you know, it's a one-shot. It's one and done. So, that makes, essentially, uh, one of these a variant cover, as the interiors are identical. Uh, you know, same book. All right, no harm, no foul. Nothing wrong with grabbing uh, both of these for the two different covers. But, <laughs> the back of this one is the front of this one, right? And the back of this one is the front of this one. And that's, that's not a printing error. As you can see, this was done totally on purpose. That's the back, front. This one, for some reason, has the uh, text. But, clearly, two different covers just... You know, reverse. So, you know, no matter which copy you buy, you get both covers. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a bit sneaky if you got a backing board and you don't pull it out, which I didn't. So you end up with both. With both. I'm okay with that. Both very cool covers. And uh, so I was showing Jim Rugg some of my pickups, and he said out of all the books that I showed him, this was probably the best find and I absolutely trust his judgment on that. Uh, Kayfabe did do a video on this with Jeff Darrow. I have not actually watched that whole video, so uh, which is great because now I can actually read this first and uh, and then go get their take on it. I'll see if they even men if they mention this cover thing at all. I thought it was really uh, really odd. I was not expecting that. The back of that is the front of that, and uh, vice versa. But as you can see. Um, inside, same thing, All right, there we go, so that is Ralph, Ralph, now here's something I've never seen before, but check out this cover, guys, that is absolutely killer, which is appropriate, as this book is called The Skull Killer, issue one from 1975, Published by Pulp Mania Incorporated, um, and this is by Bren written by Brendan Faulkner. See there, Curse of the Octopus by Brendan Faulkner. Art by uh, Gary Terry. Uh, I was I'm not familiar with either of them. Apparently, Brendan Faulkner not really a comic writer. He was like a uh, a filmmaker. Um, I'm not familiar with his work, but I guess he's better known as a filmmaker. And I gotta say, I was a little disappointed. Uh, when I flip through this, the artwork inside, it's, eh, it's just not quite of the same caliber as the cover, which is just gorgeous. I absolutely love this old pulp style cover. Inside's a little bit more rough around the edges, but still, just, even just as a cover by, that is phenomenal. Next up, we got some Robert Crumb. Uh, Homegrown Funnies, just gorgeous cover. Absolutely classic uh, crumb cover here. This is a book that had many printings, 16, I believe, and this is uh, an eighth printing. And so, yeah, there you got uh, the Snoid from Sheboygan. You got Kilroy. Shout outs to Kilroy, Angel McFood, and Mary Jane. And uh, some beautifully rendered, a beautifully rendered forest there. Excellent stuff. Then we got Hup, number three. Uh, Romping Girls and Existential Smut. Yeah, so this is cool. You know, I think this is fairly uh, well-known Robert Crumb cover. Uh, I know I've definitely seen it before. Absolutely love it. Classic Crumb lady there. And then check it out. So this is cool because uh, who do we got? We got Mr. Natural. Yeah, I've heard of him. Jean-Paul Sartre. Yeah, you guys know him. And then Donald Trump. Who I believe is like a, he's like a New York real estate guy. 
so this actually is one of the first appearances of Donald Trump in comics. The first was in an Iron Man comic, but I believe this is like his second appearance in an act as an actual comic book character, uh, which you know he basically is in real life. So that's yeah, that's cool. Um, it's a great crumb cover. Speaking of great crumb covers, guys, check this out: Bizarre Sex Issue Eight from Kitchen Sink Press. Depravity, perversity, licentiousness, and just incredible. Uh, that's that's exactly, yeah. That's what if you're if you are a Crumb fan, uh, it doesn't get much better than that, guys. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to, I don't know what else to say. It, seek, it speaks for itself. Classic Crumb stuff here. Bizarre Sex Issue Eight. Excellent find. And then, this is not Crumb. This is our friend Rand Holmes again with the... But it you know, fits right in. All Canadian Beaver Comics, issue one. And, uh, yeah. So that's a sexy Canadian comic. Rand Holmes is a Canadian, in fact. So, there you go. Uh, you, I think the cover gives you an idea of what, what you're going to find on the inside. <coughs> Okay, so I've got two books left from my Indian Underground pickups, and they were both books I honestly was not even aware of their existence. I'd never seen them before, not familiar familiar with them. But once I looked through these, man, I am so glad I found them because I immediately knew just just by using my eyeballs that these were pretty special books. Um, and I haven't really... Uh, you know, done any done any more research on these, uh, but I am definitely going to be spending a lot of time looking at through these and and learning more about them because, um, the these two they're just well you'll see I'll show you a bit. Really, this is stuff that I absolutely love. This is really what gets me uh, is stuff like this. This is color. Adults only. This is by Victor Moscosco. 1971, Victor Moscosco, distributed by the Print Mint. And this is a wordless comic, I believe. Oh no, it does. It has. It does have words. I'm thinking of. Uh, I was thinking of something else. But check out the artwork in this. Um, this is another one I showed to Jim Rugg. He mentioned something about uh, the color separations or something. Like th there is, there's something to this book just in terms of it being, um, you know, kind of a. Uh, there's some importance to it just in terms of the making of the book, I believe. I need to look into that further. But I absolutely love this uh, artwork so much and the colors as well. So yeah, Color by Victor Moscosco. Just wow. Just uh, for me, eh, I think an incredible discovery. You know, I I was not aware of this book before, but uh, boy howdy, I'm glad I am. I've, I found it because it's very cool. And my final indie and underground pickup, again, much like the Color book there, this was a uh, Color and light, how about that, All right? Perfect. Uh, this is a book I was not aware of. Did not know this thing existed. Uh, but it is another just gorgeous book. Um, first of all, that that cover. And this is, so this is called Light. It's also known as Light Comma Tragies. I think that's how you say it. This is by uh, art by Greg Irons with some a uh, bit of writing from Tom Veach, and uh, I'm not gonna show you guys every page in here, but I will definitely have to do uh, make a video where I where I do so, because it's amazing. I'll probably do a video on both of color and light together, but here's an idea of what it is. Not much text in this, mostly the artwork. And it's just beautiful. Check out that back cover. 
Uh, yeah. Like I said, this is, this is, st it's stuff like this that makes me just so happy. Uh, I mean, yeah. There's just some straight up gore stuff in here too with these creatures. I love it. So there it is, guys. Uh, that's my indie and underground comics pickups from Heroes Con. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought. What what do you think is the coolest thing here that I found that I picked up? And this is just part one. Tune into part two for my superhero big two Marvel and DC pickups. As cool as this stack here was, and I you know I found some really cool shit. I think. You know what? My Marvel and DC pickups, I think, were, were just as great. I'm just as happy with the stuff I found there at a great deal. So be sure to tune into that video. And that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.